All right, thank you. So we are now officially recording. And again, I am Mark Bowers, uh, founder and executive director of Professional Development Consortium of Hampton Roads. Welcome to tonight's session. Um, this is a repeat for the people in the room. You already heard a little bit about this. Uh, PDCHR exists for educating the leaders of membership associations um, in that peculiar world of resource constraints and doing stuff after hours. So I really appreciate all of you who are here today and all of you who might be listening, uh, joining us later and perhaps even watching this on our YouTube channel. So with that, um, I would like to uh, just go right ahead and introduce uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Mr. Bernd Haas. Uh, Bernd is with um, uh, several organizations, um, run several businesses under one umbrella <laughs> focused on um, providing executive level coaching um, to smaller business to, uh, business owners. So what I'll do is I will just turn this whole thing over to Baron. Baron, you can go ahead and continue the introduction and go right in tonight's uh, session on strategic planning and execution. Well, Mark, thank you very much for the uh, great introduction here. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Bernd Hase. Um, uh, yeah, um, I really appreciate the opportunity here to uh, join you as a group and um, obviously to Mark. Thank you very much for allowing me here to, uh, to uh, be, the, be on the center stage here tonight. I uh, hope we are going to have some interesting interactions. And that is a key word here tonight. Um, I uh, hope you're all prepared to interact a little bit with me and in general with the group because I have a few things to ask and hopefully you're going to be uh, excited to provide some answers to this one or uh, for yourself, you know, a couple of, and this is a bad word, I know, uh, exercises, um, which is uh, hopefully, you know, a little bit thought provoking and uh, gets you to uh, a state where you're thinking about strategic planning if you're not doing so already. So as Mark suggested, uh, jumping straight into it. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna share my screen with you. If I know how to do this, where are we? Right here. And we're good to go. Are we good, Mark? Very good. All right, good, really appreciate it. Uh, so the tech check worked about 20 minutes ago. So let's hope uh, it's gonna continue this way. Although in my experience, sometimes technology is unpredictable. So that was my disclaimer for the night, uh, just in case I'm pressing, I'm pressing the wrong button here but uh, I will certainly try not to do that. Uh, so the topic of tonight, strategic planning and execution, uh, obviously for associations, um, that is what um, PDCHR is all about, but Mark already alluded on this a little bit. Um, my forte and where I'm coming from is more the commercial world, but there are a lot of parallels and um, you know, we decided that we are gonna go ahead and um, you know, present this to you, um, knowing that uh, there are a lot of parallels and, and takeaways even for those who lead associations. But first things first, not sure how close you're following Mark as a person, if this thing works, yeah, here we go. Okay, just in case you missed it, it was Mark's birthday yesterday. So Mark, happy belated birthday to you. I hope you had a great time. And I do apologize for, uh, <laughs> for plagiarizing here your Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> profile picture here i just love it so much i think because it's 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 public anyway i said let's share it with the group it's uh it's something if there's anyone out here who appreciate birthdays i'm pretty sure you know it is mark so mark happy birthday belated uh, and good health to you for the next 65 years thank you very much for that perhaps we could just end the session now Go on, on. <laughs> <laughs> all right fair enough fair enough 
By the way, um, the chat box is open. Um, if you have a question, by all means, use the chat box. Um, but at the same time, um, as, I, as I said, we're gonna have a few exercises here tonight. And um, if you're up to it, I'm so, I certainly am, make this a lively discussion, then let's do this. All right, first of all, let's get to know each other a little bit better. So um, who am I? Um, I'm the president of Leader Connect Consulting located here in Virginia Beach. Um, I have a corporate career, I have a corporate past, I have a previous life, if you like, um, and that in fact enabled me to come here to the United States uh, over 20 years ago. I have spent uh, most of my corporate career in executive positions with heavy equipment manufacturers. The world was my market and my playground, if you like, um, in particular because I was active in sales, marketing and customer support. Um, and yeah, I have a couple of uh, college degrees, but that's really not important here tonight. Um, what do I do today? I work with mostly local institutions and organizations, um, in particular their leadership teams, or if it's a smaller company, in fact, the owners directly on strategic and executive services. What are these services? Strategic planning. Um, and execution, obviously, that goes together. Um, I also facilitate executive peer boards. I am a leadership coach. Also do leadership development and training and some general consulting services, mostly to my um, existing clients, if they have a need on any of these, you know, a lot of people have asked me to help, for example, hire um, the key personnel, help them to hire, recruit and hire key personnel for them. Um, some sales, some marketing and in particular operation there as well. So pretty, pretty broad uh, spectrum here. Uh, the core really is the peer board facilitation and along the way, the strategic planning and execution with my uh, members. So I was hoping that we have a bit of a conversation about getting to know you as well. So if I may, um, a quick shout around the room, who is, uh, who is happy to introduce yourself if you are and let us know um, your organization, uh, the name and the size of it, your role and in particular your expectations for tonight. Anyone volunteering? I, I, can, I can go first, my name is Vance Kinsey. Um, my organization is Norfolk Naval Shipyard. It's about uh, 11,000-ish uh, people. I am a master black belt, uh, a performance improvement um, facilitator, instructor, uh, coach, mentor. And uh, my expectations for tonight are uh, professional development. All right. Welcome, Vance. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure, I'll go. My name is Paul Heim. I'm the... Uh past president of TASC, Tidewater Association of Service Contractors. Uh, and I also work for WR Systems, an engineering and technical services firm here in Norfolk. So my, my purpose for joining the event is twofold. One, to help out TASC. TASC has been around uh, 30 plus years now, and it's a, it's a membership org. We do a bunch of industry days and it's a relatively small board of volunteers who help run the organization. And then WR Systems, as I mentioned, engineering technical services around 400 plus, but under 500, uh, been around for uh, about 40 years now, servicing Navy navigation and some other Navy customers, um, NAVC, et cetera. So just, uh, just trying to gain some insights into some strategic efforts that I could perhaps help and share with uh, both of those organizations. Perfect, thank you very much, Paul, appreciate it, welcome. Anyone else? Okay, all right. No problem at all. Let's move on from here. So I mentioned uh, we want to do this a little bit interactive. Um, my suggestion is you have a notepad available. And um, well, you are on an electronic device already. 
but um, if you have an external cell phone, you know, a separate cell phone, that certainly would help, but you don't need to do that. You can simply switch uh, a Windows here. That works as well. It's just a little bit more, more complicated. Um, don't worry, this is not going to be too complicated. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a quick and easy thing. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, dive into it right away. So there are way more smarter people than me out there who um, found out that strategic planning really is absolutely essential for business success. And this is not only for the last 50 years, not only for the last 100 years. You know, strategic planning, honestly, uh, let's face it, uh, um, was part of um, war efforts. How can we win a war uh, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago? So um, as we all know, a plan really helps to achieve your goals and succeed in what you're trying to do. Um, so, but you need a plan for this. You know, a goal is one thing, having a plan is another thing. Now, if it's just a wish because you don't have a plan, you're hoping for something. And we all have heard it before, hope is not a strategy. So, um, as you probably have seen from my introduction, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm an engineer. I work with processes. So what I'm going to do tonight, I'm using a process as our guide. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you too much with too many details about the process itself. But it really will help us to guide us through um, tonight here. And uh, it's going to allow us to uh, go into uh, a little bit more details here. And hopefully you'll have a sheet of paper by the end of the evening, which has some really interesting information on it. Um, for, you know, strategic information you can use for future strategic planning. Yeah, another thing is, and Mark and I discussed that uh, fairly extensively, what is a good time for strategic planning? Well, number one, there's really not a bad time to start doing it. It's like, you know, what is a good time to plant a tree 20 years ago? So a uh, strategy, if you have not, or your organization for that matter, if you have not done it in the past, um, now is a good time to start. Now, but still, fall, as you can imagine, you know, um, the change of years is always a big break uh, for everything what we do. And it is a good time to start your strategic plan for next year, because then you can make your strategic plan an annual plan. Now, strategy typically looks ahead three to five years. Anything beyond that is more of a, of a vision, but a strategy and in particular the plan, the plan which is part of the strategy should look about three to five years ahead. So here's your first, first question I would like to ask you. Now, again, either use a separate window um, with a browser and go to menti.com or use your cell phone. It works as well, um, which you have on the site. Um, I, I leave this to you. Put in the code 55653519. It's going to ask you one question and it requires one answer. It is really that simple. You go ahead and answer that question. Here we go, which is, by the way, it's anonymous. Don't worry about it. We're not tracing you where it was coming from. But it provides us really good insights. I need the code 5565. What's the other? 3519. There's also in the chat, if you have access to your chat box, a uh, direct link that'll take it right to it. It's got the code built into it. All right, we've got three answers so far. Oh, 
oh, come on, gang, let's not be bashful. You're just you're just making a selection, and Baron guarantees that it's anonymous, so you won't be held to any of this. <laughs> so maybe we get like two more people to answer up on this. All right. Okay. All right, let's let's leave it here. That's okay. That's okay. So, given the fact that um, we have a couple of larger organizations here, which um, um, I'm pretty sure have a strategic plan formulated and are in some shape or form executing it, um, um, you know, this is a result. Personally, I would expect. I'm not surprised about this one. A nice to have. Um, is, is good too, which I assume um, there are certain hurdles to overcome to generate this or to create this strategy and then executing it. We're getting to that one in a moment. So then let's move on. So let's ask ourselves why strategic planning. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little excursion here for you into the commercial world. In particular, when you look at small to medium sized companies, um, what they think about strategic planning. Ninety seven percent of business owners absolutely say a strategic plan is essential for my business success. I need to do that. But also 95% of those 97% say, I don't take the time to do it. So what gives? Why is that the case? And there are many, many answers. You know, the cases are always different, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to priorities. Are they working in the business or are they working on the business? As small to medium-sized businesses, let's not forget this, large corporations, they do have the resources they have uh, dedicated resources, which are working on strategy, which by the way, was part of my job while I was in corporate uh, um, doing this one. And if it's being implemented on a global scale, uh, that is a challenge, no, nonetheless it is. So take the time for it. That's, it uh, that's the major reason for it. And this is a priority. So if you think you are or your organization in one of them who's saying, yeah, we need it, but we don't take the time for it. I say you probably have collectively a re reactive mindset, not a proactive. And tonight, if anything, the theme of tonight is I would encourage you to become proactive in that regards. Because if you are proactive, you are formulating your future, you're planning your future rather than reacting to the present. You want to create the facts rather than someone or something else creates the facts and you are reacting to it. So I mentioned the process. This is in its simplest form. The process I'm going to use tonight for strategic planning. Now, my organization has given it the name the Strategic Transformation Process or StratPro. It's really designed for leadership teams of organizations. It works for almost all size of organizations, with the exception of the smallest of the smallest. You know. The, the, the startups um, where the owners, you know, they fund themselves through investors rather than their operational business, these sort of things. This is where it really does not work quite yet. In practice, it is facilitated, workshop-based, um, these, these sort of things. Don't need to go into details here. Um, in large organizations, I think someone mentioned, I think Vance, it was you saying, you know, my organization got 11,000 employees. It works entirely different on that level. You have, you have a board, they do this. And by the way, that's all what they do. And then they make sure the implementation is going according to plan. And then they take care of investors. 
That's why typically board members have the lowest uh, golf handicap. So let's have a quick look here how that works out. Obviously, it's a wheel. It's not a straight line. And it is a wheel because this turns. You're moving along the wheel in clockwise fashion, and you end up at the top again. So this is a process. It is not an event. Strategic planning is. It is hard enough to do the planning which hopefully at the end of the planning, and this would be in this case, section one through to four, will end up in a properly formulated strategic plan with all bells and whistles. That's hard enough, but honestly, that's where the work starts because execution is almost more important than a proper plan there. But we were starting with alignment. And alignment is a word which we all hear a lot. What does alignment really mean? Alignment at the beginning, at the beginning means getting the collective buy-in from all participants. And this is, you know, when you start, start this process, it means um, executives, maybe some senior managers in the room that they agree we are going to develop a strategic plan and we're using this process and we have fierce discussions, but at the end, we will have agreement. Now you can lay certain ground rules with regards to behaviors and communications uh, in a large organization uh, that is typically not quite necessary um, because you know, as professionals, we all know how to, at least how to behave. Communication is a different thing uh, should be part of the plan that you have a way how to communicate to your organization. Vision number two. Really in a nutshell, there's, there's so much to it, but really in a nutshell it says, what do you want your organization to look like when it grows up? <laughs> Now, this is probably gonna get an eye roll with an 11,000 employee organization, but even that statement does not, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for here, does not avoid the need for strategic planning. There's always room for improvement. You know, yes, you can be part or even lead a mature organization which has, because it's big enough, has plenty of rules and regulations it needs to follow from the outside and plenty of inside processes. That doesn't mean everything is perfect. Again, I'm talking from uh, uh, ex experience here. I've been part uh, in, in, in corporate life of a division which had on a global scale about 5,000 employees. Uh, about a billion, you know, a billion five in annual revenue. And strategy was a constant process. I'm even going as far as saying it was a constant battle to, to do that. Even there, there was the need to constantly refocus ourselves and others and saying, are we doing the right thing based on our strategy? So vision, vision. Let's have a look at vision. This is where I suggest you take your notepad and really think about. Now, in a large organization, if you're part of a large organization, um, you're not the CEO. But my suggestion is you're imagining for five minutes, you are, <clears throat> excuse me, you are the CEO. So, how would you formulate the vision for your organization? A couple of guidelines, if you like. Obviously, it should be short and simple. Someone said it should be uh, an eight-year-old should be able to memorize it in three minutes. It should be ambitious, aspirational, rather more descriptive and less abstract. And I get to that one in a minute. And thought-provoking. 
how great is it when you use the vision statement of your organization and let's say you're going to a conference or you're doing networking any in, in any shape or form and you're meeting someone new asking you you know what do you do and for what company are you working or organization are you working and it is really that simple that you not verbatim but can quote the company the company's vision statement and you have the greatest conversation at hand afterwards because it is thought provoking so let me give you an example the very first vision statement of google was they have a different one now but the very first one was to organize the world's information and make it available at one click Let that sink in for a minute. The question which I'm pretty sure comes to everyone's mind and saying, this is great, but how do you want to do this? It's a conversation starter, i.e. thought provoking. Yes, it is a little bit abstract, but then again, it is also descriptive because if we, with the word click, it's clearly they, uh, they I mean, we know Google by now, everyone knows Google by now, but 20 years ago, Google wasn't that um, that well known. So clearly in the IT space with a, with a click, you know, and yeah, that is ambitious. And it's short. So my suggestion to you is, let's take a few minutes. Have a bit of a break, if you like. Grab your notepad and draft something along those lines. Don't worry, there won't be any, uh, any uh, uh, calling out uh, afterwards. Um, this, is, this is for you. But want to trigger your thought process on how does your vision statement look like? Or if your organization has one, my question is, do you know it? And if you do, Try to understand it under these premises here. Is it really that way? Now, if you, again, if you're working for a large organization and you have an executive team who comes up with these sort of things and you are now part of it, you have to take what you get. Granted, no doubt about this one. But again, if you can be the CEO for three or five minutes, what would you do? So I'm gonna leave you here with it for three minutes and uh, use your notepad or whatever you want to use and think about this a little bit. Mark, do, you, do we have some music we can run in the meantime? Some inspirational music? You're on mute.
All right. Not sure if that was three minutes. I don't run a timer here, but uh, let's let's leave it here for for a minute. So as I said, I'm not going to call out anyone, but I do ask for volunteers. If there's anything you can share, not necessarily the statement itself, but by thinking about it or by even formulating and writing it down, um, what thoughts came to mind? I'll jump in just because. Um, <laughs> so th this is interesting. You know, it, 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 actually kind of caught me off guard, especially uh, what you said, Baron, about um, do you even know what it is? Because I wrote it and then I had to go back to one of our documents to see what it, uh, <laughs> to see what it actually said. And of course, the most embarrassing, well, so many embarrassing things, I just dropped ours in the chat box. Um, this is not exactly three to five years out at this point. In fact, it's not even three months out. So, you know, so there's this um, concept uh, that, no eight-year-old or 62-year-old um, could memorize in three minutes. Um, it might be ambitious and aspirational. It's, I think, fairly descriptive um, and maybe thought-provoking. Um, but yeah, it doesn't trip off the tongue, you know, all that nice. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So thanks for the great whole time. That, yeah, great sharing that, Mark. I really appreciate it. Um, this is very descriptive. Um, with a lot of information, information in in there, and yes, you just confer you you just made uh, or proved my point here. This is a good time to start planning for the next year as an annual plan, um, or looking three to five years ahead. Again, with a vision, by all means, look ahead ten years if uh, if that's what you want to do. There is no limit for that. You know, when Bezos when when Bezos started. He built an online bookstore first. And I'm pretty sure when he worked on that one, his vision was, I build an online bookstore. Visions evolve. There's nothing wrong with that, but you've got to start somewhere. Anyone else ready to share something? Okay. Actually, hey, Bernd. Oh. Hey, Baron, let, let yeah. me share. So uh, Bill, who's uh, uh, driving and, and, and speaking, sent one uh, to me instead of everybody, but I'll just share on his behalf. Um, so Bill's uh, suggested to bring clarity uh, of self-understanding to empower fulfillment. And I'll drop that in, in the chat box as well. Hey, Mark, I unmuted for a minute. Oh, well, you can speak for yourself then, darn it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, because I'm driving, so it might be loud. Right. But um, hi, everyone. Uh, Bill Dittmar. I have a company called Executive Fusion. Uh, the one I popped in there relates to the part of our business where we do um, basically transition coaching for individuals, especially the military community right now. And so the one that I put in there is to bring clarity of understanding relates to our work is helping them understand their uh, natural strengths and talents and then helping them to focus on finding the next best fit with regards to their job and then also their ideal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Good one, Bill. By the way, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I'm sorry. I I kind of got stuck in double book tonight, so that's yeah, why I'm no, joining. No, no, no problem. No, this is this is great. This is this is great. Uh, you're you're sharing that. Thank you very much. Here's here's one point I would make on on this one. It's it's definitely a great statement. But does it look out into the future who you want to be when you grow up, or your or your organization, what you would like it to be when you when it when it grows up? Yeah, uh, yes, that's a fair point. And when I was listening earlier, I'm like, well, the statements that I have right now are all kind of probably one year focused. Okay. They certainly don't match uh, what you said with regards to a three to five year plan. Yeah. So definitely a place that I could work on. Right. It is, it is a common theme almost 
is does vision statement and mission statements. You know, we all heard vision, mission, values. We have heard that before. In fact, this is how it was introduced to, to strategic planning 20 years ago. Vision, mission, values, that's what we need to work on. And there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that one. But the, the challenge here is to really separate between your vision and your mission statement. Your, as, I, as I said, your vision statement looks ahead. You define how far ahead, but it does look ahead into the future. Your mission statement describes what you're doing today, what benefits you're providing to your, you know, either services or products, but really the benefits you are providing to your uh, clients, paying or not, doesn't really matter, you know, to the people you're working with. What benefits? That is your mission statement. Now, in our, in our uh, 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 process here, uh, the StratPro process, we actually do not work with what we call a mission statement. We actually work with a value proposition. And that's why if you look at, uh, at number two in the wheel, it says vision, values, and culture. We work with a value proposition um, because it really uh, uh, describes, we feel it describes better the benefit um, the organization provides to its clients better than a mission statement does. At the end of the day, you could say, well, it's just a different headline. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna argue about that one. Um, so, but, but regardless, think about the, the differentiation between a vision statement and a mission statement. All right, hey, let's hey, move on. Hey, Baron, before we move on, yeah, um, <clears throat> if you don't mind, uh, so we, we talk, you, you use, you know, the, the, that phrase, you know, three to five years or maybe more stuff like that. If I could just, you know, add a little bit to that, um, you know, I, I think that's, that's a given in the commercial sector. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I think that's also very important to hold for membership associations. And, and, and this is why, and you, you and I had chatted about this a little while ago, um, so typically in membership associations, so like Paul over at uh, TASC, um, the leadership turns over pretty quickly. I mean, the bylaws generally move people in and out of those positions, you know, a year or two, you know, in their role, particularly at the executive level, it might be, um, you know, president elect, president, past president, then, then you're off to the races. Um, one of the things that I've, I've found in uh, years of working with membership associations, is that um, that churn can cause a little bit of a loss of vision or mission or mm -hmm. strategy or purpose or whatsoever. So I think a strategic document, you know, be it a you know, full blown plan or you know, some smaller components of it is really important to provide continuity during because of that rapid churn, that rapid turnover of uh, organizational leadership. Um, you know, in, in effect, it, you know, provides, you know, continuity in terms of this is what we do, this is what we're about, rather than the new president comes in and has to rebuild all of that from scratch. I mean, granted, that's kind of what happens in D.C., um, but it doesn't have to happen to us. So that's why I just want to kind of underscore the importance of doing this through three to five years, even though in your membership organization, um, you may not be in, in that particular role. Um, you know, living through the, you know, the success or consequences of that. Uh, right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm absolutely with you there, there, Mark. Uh, and that is certainly a challenge, you know, that the tenure of leaders in, in, in these sort of associations uh, is just not long enough for them to see the fruits of their labor. Uh, they might continue to be part of that organization, but they probably are not in a leadership role anymore after they, let's say, uh, um, had the, you know, the, the foresight, um, but also the privilege of, of, of formulating this sort of, of strategy. If you are uh, um, ready to take over a leadership position for an, for an organization like that, I think the first question personally I would ask is, uh, to the uh, outgoing president is, um, you know, what is our um, vision? What is our value proposition or mission for that matter? Um, what are our values? Have, has that been formulated? 
Um, I mean, chances are that it did not happen in the past. Now, I'd like to believe that those who are here tonight subscribe to the idea of strategic planning as a whole in general. You know, the little details about the process is a different story, but in general. So that's why I'm saying this is your opportunity to really say, um, well, then I'm going to be the one who's actually starting it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be the one together with my new fellow board members, if you like. Um, we're going to work something out. Um, make it simple. It's, I know it's such a big word, strat strategy and strategic plan and these sort of things. The, the word plan in itself scares a lot of people, honestly. You know, they're saying, well, it, it, it takes so much time to write a plan. Oh, yeah, and, and, and it surely does. But, uh, you know, complexity and the work you put in there is really in the eye of the beholder in there. So it is up to you how much time you want to spend this. And if you come from nothing, something, even if it's not perfect, is already progress. So um, see it from that perspective and take the initiative. Again, you know, as I said at the beginning, be proactive. Um, surely understood, you know, some of these organizations provide a service. And this service is a process, an established process, if it is an established organization, over and over and over and over again. But as, as let's say, a new leader for this organization, I, I think it is not only your, your prerogative, but it is your, uh, um, you know, the, the company has that need that you think about where do we want to lead this organization? Again, you might not see um, this coming to fruition for various reasons. Maybe you're still part of it, but not in a leadership position anymore. But I think you can take solace in the fact that you were the one or you and your board at the time were the one established these sort of things. So that's, uh, that's what I would encourage you to do when you uh, are part of an organization. I mean, typically, honestly, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, presidents are being recruited out of, out of, out of the existing team. Uh, they might have been board members already for a while. They have been part of this organization. They take over um, the president's role uh, for a year, two or three, and then they move on. Someone else is taking it over. They're still going to be part of the board. So you are being part of the implementation and execution of that process. So um, good point. Uh, thanks for making that uh, point, Mark. OK, so that's the vision. A little bit dis uh, descriptive and a little bit less abstract. All right. So let's move on. Diagnose, diagnostics. And that has that can have any shape or form. You can you can do this. Needless to say, it really is a look in the mirror. You've got to be open and honest with yourself. You've got to be critical and fair with yourself as an organization. Um, you know, a standard tool here is do a SWOT analysis. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what a SWOT analysis is. Um, we at StratPro, we have what we call business diagnostics. It's essentially an online questionnaire with up to 400 questions, lot numbers, these sort of very detailed, call it a guided SWOT because we are asking very specific questions. And at the end of the day, you are getting a result out of uh, where you stand on these sort of things. You know, by doing so, you will flush out the critical areas. Now, most of you probably large and small organization, even if you're only leading part of a large organization, these sort of things, you probably know what's wrong and you know what works. But it really helps to, to formalize this process, put it on paper, and by the way, involve your team, of course. Um, I, I do not advocate for um, the leader um, locking him or herself into the office and emerging two weeks later and waving a PowerPoint presentation and now saying, this is our new strategy. Um, been there, done that, doesn't work. 
well, I was on the receiving end, not on the delivering end. And uh, it was pretty uh, interesting. So what this analysis does is just define the critical areas. Don't say, uh, we don't sell enough, we need to hire more salespeople, or we need to uh, uh, improve our marketing efforts, or we need to expand our markets to new uh, geographical regions. That comes later. Right now, you are just diagnosing and finding out through an established process, what are the critical areas. And obviously you wouldn't do any, any planning if, uh, um, if you wouldn't have any areas where you feel or the team as a whole, if not the company as a whole feels, we need to do better in this area. You know, a strategic plan typically you know, involves um, improving on things where, where you feel and the team feels and the company feels um, no one is delivering on right now. Bernd, would it be fair to say, um, oops, yeah, you jumped ahead, but that's okay. No, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. When, you're, when you uh, refer to um, the, the third bullet there, analyze what works and what doesn't, um, what standard um, are we looking at when we say, you know, you know, working and not working? Is that, and this is what I think is, is that against our vision? You know, is what we're doing supporting or not supporting our vision? Or is there some other standard you, you see there? Yeah, I mean, once you have formulated your vision, that is a thought who always needs to be in the back of your head. And you've got to ask your, yourself the question, whatever you're doing from now on, in particular under number four, when you really start formulating the goals, uh, you know, you're saying, whatever we're doing now, is this in line with the vision or is this actually detrimental with the vision? It is, it is, it is a balance act or a balancing act um, you, uh, you have to do with every activity. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with, 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 with having someone in the room when you, when you, let's say, hypothetically, you're going through that exercise with the team in a room you know, someone assigning to the simple role of every 20 minutes asking the question, is this in line with our vision? Just to keep that thought alive so that everyone thinks about this. Um, and at the end of the day, it's all about that the team who comes up with the plan has agreement and saying, yes, this is our new plan. This is why uh, well, we're talking about decision making here. As a, as a leader, you got to be able to make decisions when you formulate a plan. But are we coming to that one uh, a little bit later on? Does that answer your question, Mark? Yep, thank you. All right, number four. No, actually, I'm sorry. Here's another one. Grab your pen and paper again. And yes, we're, we're gonna jump the gun here a little bit. Uh, you haven't had the time to do a SWOT analysis, let alone a guided business diagnostics, big word, I know, uh, for that matter. But take this, take this, uh, um, you know, the, the, the simple route right now. And you now it, it, it's gonna come more from the emotional side rather than the um, factual side, but that's okay, at least for tonight. Um, what are the two or three, what we call critical success factors? These are the areas you have identified through the previous analysis. What are the two or three critical success factors for your entire organization? Again, if you wanna play CEO for an hour, go ahead, do this. Or if you're leading something uh, you know, a part of a larger organization, maybe you're only looking at, at this division or department or what, what, whatever it is, whatever it might be. What are the critical success factors? Now, a few examples here is, if you're saying we're not selling enough, that is already, that is a symptom. That is not the factor itself. Not selling is a symptom of we need more revenue. So your critical success factor is revenue. 
This is not the 30,000 feet view. This is the 50,000 feet view. Identify the factor. Don't come up with any ideas yet how to resolve the revenue issue. For example, it could be anything. You know, uh, it could be cost control. It could be HR issues. It could be motivational. Uh, it, it could be so many things. Of course, you know, if you are if you are part of a uh, of a commercial enterprise, everything leads back to profitability. But there are many ways to uh, many roads, many avenues to get to profitability. Increasing sales is one of them. If if you are part of an organization which is funded through donations, um, grants or grants, for example, um, revenue is probably not your thing. So for you, it's fundraising. Again, I'm gonna give you a minute or two here so you, that you can think about that. Wait, did I just miss my cue for music? <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> that means you're going to get it. Okay. All right. Shouldn't be really too hard to uh, come up with two or three bullet points here. Um, what areas you feel need attention in your strategic plan? And that's what it's all about. The strategic plan. Obviously, we are still under the larger heading of planning here. As I said, you know, uh, 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 section one through to four of the wheel are more on the planning side and then five or six is obviously on the execution side we get to that one in a minute so the plan obviously this is where you dive into details you define what needs to be achieved but you also define how to get there these are two different things and i'm going to show you how we structure this. If you look at that little triangle there on the right, you have, you're starting out with the critical success factor. That's the foundation of everything. From there, you formulate goals, then strategies, action plans, tactics. Again, I'm not gonna go into too many details here, but you, you pretty much understand it, understand what, what is there. This is essentially the cascading of tasks from the 50,000 feet view to ground level, from executives all the way down to the individual contributors who are being part of a team, who are part of a team. These, this strategic plan structure, and this is very important, cannot be over communicated. Even if you are, let's say, an assigned strategic manager, and kind of get tired of repeating these things over and over again, understand this is part of your job. It needs to be communicated. Um, the moment you get more onto the ground level, you know, the, 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 the people who are out there, you know, we have a few people here from the shipyard, obviously, the ones who are really out there uh, on the dock and putting those vessels together or the engineers doing their engineering in their offices or again, out, out on site, these sort of things. That is operational business because that's what the shipyard does, design and manufacture military vessels, right? It's not operating them, but so the operational business is designing and manufacturing. That's what it does, you know? That still means there is, everyone has a role here to play. So 
Unfortunately, I really couldn't, I was looking for that picture. I couldn't find it, but I'm gonna describe it to you. It's a picture which is 50 years old. A Saturn V rocket in its hangar, fully assembled in its hangar. It's not out yet on the launch pad. And this, 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 this rocket, I mean, we all know how massive it is. We know how massive the hangar is. It's kind of a shot which is kind of shot downwards and you see part of the floor where the rocket is really standing on. And there's this one dark spot on the floor, which in fact, when you zoom in, you realize that it's actually someone with a broom sweeping the floor. Okay, and as the legend goes, true or not true, I think it's just a great analogy still, is that person was asked what sort of role he has. Guess what he, what he answered? He said, I helped putting a man on the moon. And sure he did. At the time, everyone has a role to play here. And I just, just love the, the, the mindset that gentleman has. Um, it, it says a lot, you know, it's, uh, it must have been a huge motivational boost for everyone at that time working at NASA, and I guess it still is, um, as, as engineers, you know, being allowed to engineer the hell out of things, um, uh, to, be, to be part of that endeavor. Um, so he was tremendously proud of that. There's, there's nothing else you can do as a leader to motivate that person more. He's highly motivated. Again. That's how the legend went, uh, assuming everything is, is true. Still a good story. So that's essentially how the plan looks like um, from a structural point of view. Honestly, when I work with my clients, I do not go past action plans. Um, tactics, it's something I leave to them. You know, uh, a tactic can be as simple as saying, you know, pick up the phone on, and call John and ask John the question X, Y, Z. Uh, way too detailed at that moment, not for a strategic plan, but um, this can be the structure. So as you can imagine, boring you with a couple of uh, math equations here. If you have two or three so critical success factors. And there are rule of thumbs. And you have three to five goals per critical success factor. Then you have another two or three strategies per goal. And another two or three action plans per strategy. This can get easily out of hand. This is where things get complicated. Um, for large organizations, not so much of a challenge uh, because they do have the resources to manage this. For smaller ones, certainly a manage. And that's why one of the major messages I want to bring over here is if your organization really does not have the resources, keep it simple. Really less. And if you work with, 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 with an annual plan, not even a strategic plan, with an annual plan, things you want to achieve next year, keep it even simpler. Have ambitious, an ambitious vision, have ambitious goals, but do not you know, uh, uh, make them unrealistic. So smart goals. You would think it's not really that difficult to write proper goals. But what I've seen from experience, cooperation or not, it actually is, not for everyone, for some people really is, what is a goal? First thing you gotta do is define success. Define the end stage you wanna get at. Because you wanna, <coughs> excuse me, you want to be able to determine, have I achieved this goal or not? And the only way, there are only two ways to do that. You either put numbers behind this or you have 
a yes no achievement threshold you know if as a family for example if your goal is to get another child i know it's kind of an odd example here but still there is there is just no way to say i have achieved this goal to 50 percent so that's a yes or no threshold as you can imagine you either were able to add to the family in a year's time or you weren't but you get it you know you you, you understand what i mean um because as a leader you're formulating it for others you've got to be very specific and you'd be surprised how how easy it is to misunderstand when you formulate a goal um, and those who are part of the execution process have not been part of the formulation or, ex or, or design process of that goal, of the discussion, I should say, of that, of that goal, how many questions there are. And sometimes, unfortunately, these questions are just not being asked. You know, that's why, again, I'm coming back to what I said earlier on, whatever you do here, there's just no way you, that you over communicate these things. Measurable, I mentioned that one, achievable. Again, should be ambitious, but achievable. Don't make them unrealistic. Um, quadruplets next year is probably unrealistic. Again, talking about family planning. Um, responsible means who? Who is going to be responsible? Because as a leader, you want to have a go-to person and saying, where are we with this? And T by time-based. Goals by definitions are projects. And projects, by definition, are finite. Because if it is a project which you believe is infinite, then it's actually a process. So that's why a smart goal. Specific, measurable, achievable, responsible, i.e. who. Who is the one responsible or accountable? Sometimes people also, yeah, it, it sometimes happened that people use the A for accountable. Um, and these this things are a little bit uh, mumbled up here. At the end, it all comes, on, comes down to the, uh, to the same. Um, and then obviously the time-based. So with the three, two or three critical success factors, I suggest you spend a few minutes and write down some goals. Ideally, make them smart goals. I'm gonna break for two minutes and give you the time to think about this.
All right. Okay. So I hope this little excursion inspired you to think about this a little bit and, um, you know, have a few smart goals on your piece of paper there now, either for your entire organization or for the part of the organization you're responsible for, um, allowing you to put this in place really for next year, starting next year. Talking about putting this in place, I think the better word there actually is execution. And if you feel it has been hard up until now to do all these things and come up with, with, with these tasks for, letter, for, for, for lack of a better term, um, from, you know, uh, area one through to four on the wheel. Now the real work starts. My gearhead friends say, this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, and that's true. This is where you put static work, i.e. the ideas which are now on paper into action. This is where you develop traction. This is where you develop momentum. And I kind of felt compelled to put this little quote out here because I have seen it numerous times. This is where the intention of strategy falls apart. Again, coming back to the very beginning when we talked about priorities, this all of a sudden means something and someone needs to change because something will change the way the, the group, the organization, the division, the department, large or small, has worked in the past. If uh, implementing a strategy was not part of their daily business. Now it all of a sudden it becomes part of their daily business. This is hard. And this is in fact where you have to spend most of the resources. Large organization, picture this. Um, the executives have formulated a strategy and let's assume they're really great in communicating it to the entire organization. Now it is down to um, senior mid-management level to formulate their own action plans, if you like, and make sure every single person is number one aware and is working accordingly. Now, um, typically what's going to happen is that those individual contributors, you know, the, as individuals or as groups in teams, um, they have an area of responsibility, which is mostly day-to-day -day business, operational business. So their involvement in strategy will be smaller than um, um, leadership, management in that regards. It, re it requires decision-making process, for example, and then putting things in action. Um, but still, everyone plays a role. I'm coming back to the gentleman who sweeped the floor um, right next to a Saturn V record, uh, rocket. But keep that in mind, this is where you will develop momentum. Um, in my own experience, um, this is what we did in corporate. And then we really, really struggled with implementation. You've got to be diligent, very diligent about this. Um, and that's why the simpler, the better. Dilbert has a word for that.
Well, as we all know, Dilbert and his colleagues and his boss, they are masters in sarcasm. Um, and sarcasm is quite often the first stage of failure. But here it is meant for entertainment. After all, it's a comic. Um, I love these guys <laughs> because there's a lot of truth behind this one. So this is, this is something as a leader, you need to be diligent about are they truly working on the strategy or are they pretending to work on the strategy? And how can you really find out really about the last piece of the pie here, the optimization? And really the optimization is all about the measures. Remember under, under number four, when you formulated the plan, we said you got to measure success numbers or as a minimum, a yes and no. This is where you intervene if you have to. This is where this whole thing becomes a process. It is not an event. Strategic planning is not an event, even if it happens once a year, perhaps you know, on an executive level, but it is a process. It's just a very slow moving process. Make it a habit to measure progress on your strategic plan. Now, if I put my HR hat on and um, with a little bit of a nod to attendees here from large organizations, we are talking about performance management, HR performance management. You wanna make sure you're gonna be able to measure the performance of your employees. And that can be on an operational level, on the day-to-day -day work they're doing, or it can be on the strategy. What changes is that they might be spending, I don't know, 5% of their time on strategic implementations, on the tasks, everyone agreed on, they need to work on, which serve the larger st strategic plan, which again serves the overarching vision. This is where this, where, where it goes full circle. And this is where we end up at the top at number one again. Now, if you start out for the first time at number one, you know, everything from one through to four will take some time. Again, it depends on how complicated you want to make it. it will take some time. The second time around, this is going to be much smoother. The only thing you have to do really is you either get recommitment, not sure if that is a real word, but you know what I mean of uh, everyone involved saying, we're still good, we're still good. Yes, uh, we understand what we need to do and, and doing these sort of things. You might not have to rewrite your visions, your values, your culture statement, your, your uh, value proposition, these sort of things. You know, if it's really done, let's say in an annual cycle, um, no need to, after a year to do the diagnostics again, these sort of things. You have your goals, you monitor the implementation, the successful implementation and execution of the goals and the underlying strategies, action plans and KPIs. That's, that's what you wanna do. But as I said uh, uh, earlier on, because this is a process, you review and you adjust. Adjust is a very big word here. Um, don't think for a minute that a strategic plan is static. It is in flux all the time. What has been very important a year ago because you believe this or that needed to be done might not be important today anymore. You know, if you have achieved it, if you have fulfilled it, great. Check mark, move on, next topic. If you have not done it, ask yourself, why not? It was on the plan for last year, we haven't done it yet. Why not? And the answer might be, well, you know, it's not that important anymore, or, you might have underestimated the effort it takes to, to fulfill that. Ask the first question, is it still relevant? 
If it is, why didn't we do it? Ask yourself that, ask your team that. Why didn't we do it? And then the next question is, do we still need to do it? Roll it over. Even if you didn't fulfill it, roll it over into the next year. All right, that's pretty much it when it comes to the process. Um, I'm not going to dive any deeper. Um, I can talk about this for a long, long time. But number one, we have limited time. But number two, I believe you've, you've, you've got the gist of this. Um, um, it's, it's not really that complicated, honestly. What it requires is commitment and dedication to it. That's what it requires. And it also requires some leadership, some leadership you know, skills, if you like. So if we, if we split this down into, two, into the two major sections here, one is planning and the other one is execution. This is where you really need to have a look at yourself and your team who is part of the planning process. Are we able to formulate a vision? Do we have a vision? Are we creative? Are we self-aware? Are we able to do some critical thinking about ourselves? Are we able to make a decision? You need to write goals. This is what we want to achieve. And of course, you need to know your, your industry. Not sure if I really had to write this down, um, but hey, I had some space on the, on the sheet, so why not? <laughs> And then the execution. It does require a little bit of a different skill set than planning. Um, a friend of mine not too long ago said, you know, in, in, in all reality, there are two different leaders out there. They, there are those who, um, oh, he used the word, what the word, word he used? I, I can't remember. Um, who inspire, who are the thinkers, um, who have all the great ideas, but mostly they struggle with implementation or execution in that matter. And then there are those who are really got good at getting things done. They might not be the most creative ones and have the greatest ideas, but they get things done. And if you think about this um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a top level, you probably agree with me on this one and with my friend. On, on this one here as, as well. It really is that case. Now, this is a little bit of black and white thinking. The world is not black and white, um, but, uh, but still sometimes it does help to simplify things and doing it this one. So those who are good at planning, this is, this is what I wanna say. Those who are good at planning might not be the best ones good for execution and vice versa. This is where you need to find out who is part of the process. Do I know their strength and, <clears throat> excuse me, do I know their weaknesses? That's what you're looking for. All right. And I'm coming to the end here now. A couple of pitfalls. And, you know, I'm, no, I shouldn't say pitfalls, honestly. This is more like some guide, you know, some, some ideas, you know, how you can be more successful. Now, I'm assuming whatever, whatever is here on this sheet, I'm assuming you do have the resources, not sometimes you, you cannot do that. Um, define the progress and the success. You want to celebrate successes. Strategy, big word, long plans, sometimes two, three, four, five years out, people say, we will have time. No, no. If you have a deadline, and by the way, you should have a deadline for everything in there, you have to instill a sense of urgency. Now, you're prioritizing through the deadline. Don't put any percentages behind this. Um, you know, this is, or, or, or ranking. This is number one priority. This is number two, number three priority, these sort of things. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Deadlines. If you have something which needs to get done, but it is not top priority, Put it towards the end of next year, the end of 2024. This is how you manage priorities. Because if you work with priorities, I can promise you, your team will ignore everything lower than third priority. They look at priority number one and number two, but
but they're going to uh, uh, disregard whatever comes after. Less, less priority. Because it's not a priority, right? Deadlines. Ooh, that's a dreaded word. Deadlines. Here's my recommendation. Don't push your team uh, towards a close deadline because it's urgent. Again, it's still a sense of urgency. Um, no, this is a strategic plan. You know, this is not some operational emergency. This is a strategic plan. Be generous with your deadlines, but you gotta walk the talk. You've got to be firm with these deadlines. Best scenario, let's say you are in some sort of senior management position, you have some middle managers reporting to you and you ask them, you're saying, this is what we need to do. From a, This is a strategic initiative. This is what we need to do. You ask them for their deadlines and let's say one of them gives you, okay, I can do this in the next three months. Say, okay, I'm going to give you six months, but I'm not going to move the deadline. Nothing's worth, worse, worse than a deadline which has been moved three times without accountability. Do that. You're owning the process. You have to drive the process. Don't assume, even if you have well communicated, that people doing this. Um, in particular, the further involved they are in the operational business, Strategy might not be undermined. So, from that perspective, they, uh, they, they, uh, you know, you, uh, you wanna, you wanna drive the process. This one. get everyone involved from the start. If you do have the resources, by all means, appoint the strategy manager, whatever title you want to give that person. Um, you know, if 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 you have a medium-sized organization, um, it's probably someone already in your in your uh, um, in your management team. I would say. Just assign it to someone you feel is good at planning, maybe someone else good at, at executing, or make it, maybe make it a two-person team, strategy team, something like this. Do this. Keep your plan simple. Now, I said here, create a one-pager. Add in the back of my mind, this is a small, medium-sized organization. Someone, something like, like the shipyard with 11,000, you probably won't be able to put a strategic plan on there in a, on a one-pager, which is fair. And then communicate. Um, have progress meetings, you know, differentiate between um, reporting. It's a simple, you come together because everyone reports out an FYI meeting. And there's nothing wrong with those. Don't have too many though, but there's nothing wrong with those. And then have other meetings where you review and amend two different meetings. Think about that. Um, you rather want to have more short meetings than one log one. People start zoning out after 90 minutes, which is my pointer of uh, trying to be on time here. Thank you, Mark. Uh, and then absolutely incentivize progress and celebrate successes. It's up to you how you, you, you're going to do that. Um, large organizations um, might have you know, some sort of policy in place to, to do that. Maybe not. Um, Think about it, what is acceptable to your organization, large or small, how you can incentivize progress and celebrate success. It's in particular important for those who spend most of their daily work, not on strategy, on strategy execution, but rather in some sort of operational role where they have to do something. You know, the engineers in the shipyards, they need to engineer every day, every day, every day. But to some degree, they might be involved in some strategic initiatives. So how can progress be incentivized and uh, success once it's number one is defined number two it's achieved how can it be celebrated all right that's pretty much it from my end um i have a final question to ask which is essentially only about the takeaway so I would encourage you to go back to Mentimeter and here is the question. So I'm gonna sw switch this over, let's see. Uh, 
So here we are. Really appreciate your feedback. So I'm going to keep this open. You can uh, continue to respond in the meantime. Um, I'm going to wrap this up and open the floor for any questions. There must be some questions out there, unless everyone fell asleep. Nah, I don't think that's, a, that's the case at all. Um, but uh, so, I, so I give that a, a standing 10 count, and I know, you know we're, we're right up on time here. We just got a couple minutes left here. So um, what I'd first like to do is, is thank Baron, thank you very much uh, for your time and insight uh, today. Um, you know, I, you know, I think we heard, we heard a lot that could be applicable to folks' day job, you know, what they're doing in that home organization, um, or what they can um, perhaps take back if they're involved in association roles, primarily a matter of scale. I just dropped into the chat box, um, you know, a, a couple links. Uh, there's a survey. There's a what's up next, um, about a month from now, we'll be talking about managing change before it manages you. And then our full calendar. So I'd like to encourage those who are in the room or viewing this later to go ahead and just click on those links. Don't do anything with them right now. You can do it you know, when, you, when you come back from that uh, you know, adult beverage or whatever's next on your agenda. Um, but again, I wanna thank each and every one of you um, who uh, were in attendance or uh, are able to watch this a little bit later. Um, first and foremost, um, for your dedication to community service, membership association leadership is, a, I think, an undervalued and certainly under-resourced um, uh, part of what helps elevate the community around us. So thank you all for that. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, on Friday, you will um, receive an email uh, from PDCHR um, thank you for your attendance, and you'll also receive links to uh, this recording and any other resources we have up there associated with the presentation. Um, and you'll also have an opportunity, you'll have Baron's uh, contact information will be repeated there. Um, so you can go ahead, you know, and, and follow up as you wish. So with that, um, we are drawing very close to 730. I've got it at 729. So this is my last opportunity to give you the gift of time and uh, bring tonight's uh, session to a close. So with that, thank you all for attending and hope to see you back at another session or perhaps out in the real world pretty soon. Thanks everyone. All right, thanks everyone.